Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we are going to talk about switching controllers. Last time we said, ok, there might be switching controllers and there might be continuous controllers. And this time we want to talk about switching controllers. We said switching controllers. Well, the correcting variable only has some states, yeah? discrete states, and we are switching between those states. Yeah? And that's it. Why are we using them? Because they are cheap. It's the main reason. They are cheap. Why are they cheap? Mainly because uh, the you know you only have to distinguish should a switch or not. Yeah? So there is no intense calculation behind. And also the correcting uh, the the control element. The control element is much simpler. A switching element is enough. Yeah? A typical switching element is this. Yeah? This is a relay. Yeah? Herein is the relay. Like we've discussed in electric controls. Yeah? So you turn something on, you turn something off. That's it. Yeah? It must, must not be complicated and the switching element which can vary things in... No. It's simply not possible, necessary. Yeah? So this is why we're using them. And of course we will see, well, there are some downsides of switching controllers. Yeah? But, you know, if the accuracy do not need to be that high yeah? and, and the costs per item are significant, yeah? typical series production or something like this, mass production, then switching controllers are there and they are used and they are heavily used and they are used in areas where we not even notice okay so where where are they used eh? for instance uh, in your refrigerator if it's too hot inside it will start to cool. If it's then cool, it will simply stop. You hear the compressor working and then you don't hear it anymore. Yeah? And after a while, if it's getting warm inside, it will switch on again. So actually the temperature in your fridge is always changing a little bit. Yeah? And it's a typical sign of, of, of switching controllers. Or on the stove, yeah? if you cook your soup or uh, I don't know what you cook, I don't really care what you cook, but you know, there, if you can change, you can change the steps. Yeah? And if it's too hot, it will turn off. If it's too cold, it turn off. It turn on, of course. It's cold. <laughs> if it's too cold, it turn on. Yeah. So there are stoves outside which can do this. Yeah. It's a stove I can select. It's measuring the temperature. Yeah. It's really controlled. Switching control. There are quite some examples which do this. Yeah. Also, the heater. Yeah. If you buy a heater, electrical heater with a fan and stuff, yeah, the fan will always run, but the heating will only be turned on if it's too cold and turned off if it's too hot. Yeah. So that's some typical example where we simply switch. So how which switching controllers can we see out there? Yeah? So we are talking about switching controllers. One typical example is the so-called two-point controller. Uh, two-point controller is the most Simple one, let's say, yeah. So it's the two-point controller. How is this working? Well, except there is the controller. Usually looks like this. Yeah. Inside the controller, there's the control difference, or the control deviation. Yeah. 
So here we have our xd. And out of our controller is the correcting variable. I think we you know that meanwhile. Why? And how does the controlling mechanism look like? Here this is xd. Yeah. If xd is below, not no output. If xd is getting high, chuk, full output. Yeah. So here we have y. Yeah. That's the typical switching mechanism of a, of a two-point controller. Yeah. If it's too cold, if it's if it's okay, yeah, do nothing. If the, the, the deviation is positive, then book, do something. Yeah. Positive, negative, you know, it's not that, not that easy. Uh, like I said, if you want, if it's in the fridge, for example, if it's too hot, you need to cool. In, so you need to turn on. Yeah. In, the, in the heater, in the room heater, if it's too hot, you have to turn off. <laughs> so, but that's the principle. Okay, so if the uh, control deviation is at the wrong side, let's call it turn on. Uh, turn something on to correct this. Two-point controller. This here uh, is without hysteresis. This means uh, slightly above will already switch on, slightly below will already switch off. Yeah? So there is no correct for this controller. Yeah? It will always switch somewhere. Yeah? If you don't want to have this, you have to use a controller with hysteresis. And this looks like that. There's the controller again, there is my XD again, yeah? there is my Y again, Y again, <laughs> Y again, Y, okay, how does it look, Ooh, this is the wrong pen, here, this is my XD, huh? this is my Y, and this time, yeah, it will look like that. If we are above a certain value, around a sweet spot, let's call it, yeah, we will switch on. Yeah, book. And in the opposite direction, we need to go below this sweet spot and then we are switching off. Yeah. So there is a certain area where the state will simply not change. Yeah. Draw a little arrows that we know. Yeah? This is with hysteresis. Here, this is the hysteresis with. Yeah? So there's one delta, one delta. Delta is the hysteresis. Yeah? With hysteresis. That's the usual approach. Yeah? Because, you know, if it's if you think about the temperature in the fridge, it's too, it's too, it is okay. Yeah, it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. This is the temperature you want to go. Yeah? Then it needs to go a little bit above this temperature. Then, book, we will switch on the cooling. If we cool now, it will go down, 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 below this temperature, and then turn off. Yeah? Not immediately the temperature turn off and on like you would end up in a situation where you only turn off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Yeah? So this is, this is with hysteresis. Typical. Yeah? Typical. And we will look afterwards into how does it look, what, what effect does this hysteresis have. Yeah? So this two-point controller. Yeah? Let's also have a look at a so-called three-point controller.
three point controller is looking pretty much the same. Yeah. So there's XD, there's Y. And now this Y has not only two points, those two states, it has three states. This is why it's called three, three state controller, yeah? three point controller. So here is XD now, here is Y. Around a certain area around this, let's call it again, sweet spot or the point we want to have, nothing is happening. If we are too far above, we will switch on. If we are too far below, we will switch in the opposite direction. So this might be heat, this might be cool. Okay. If the temperature is too low, we will start to heat. If the temperature is too cold, we will start to is too hot, we will start to cool. Yeah? So here we have a certain area. Don't drop, please. Don't drop that. Here we have a certain area called epsilon, where we have a tolerance window. Yeah? We tolerate. We tolerate the the, the deviation. So there we have, we have a tolerance window. This is also without hysteresis. Uh, simply because, you know, at this point we are switching. Yeah? There is no hysteresis in switching. If there is a tolerance window, okay, yeah. But, but there is, this is not a hysteresis. It looks a little bit different. If we would have a three-point controller with hysteresis, yeah? I have to draw it a little bit slightly bigger here because now I need room. Inside the symbol XD Y Black pen here Here we have XD, here we have Y. Yeah. With this the races it would like this. There's still the tolerance area. Yeah. So there is still still toler we are still tolerating. So here we have a flat spot. Yeah. Then after a while we will go up. Yeah. Turn on. If we're going down, here we have a switching hysteresis and here we have also a switching hysteresis. Yeah. So we have two times a hysteresis. Here we're going up, here we're going down, here we're going down, here we're going up. Okay? So this is with hysteresis. Every switch has their own hysteresis. Yeah. With hysteresis. And here we again around this, in the middle of the hysteresis, we again have our epsilons. Okay. We again have this tolerance window, and here these tiny things are two time deltas. Yeah. These are hysteresis, switching hysteresis delta. Okay. These are Typical switching controllers, uh, two-point controller, three-point controller. This is this is how those things look like. And now, now we want to have a look how uh, such a switching controller is behaving. Uh, what do we want to do? Uh, take this one. What do we want to do? We say we have a certain we have a certain system. Yeah? 
like I said, system is given and the regulator, we need to find this. Yeah? And we say the system is a PT1 system, so a delay system first order, and we have a two-point controller with hysteresis here. Yeah? And I want to draw now a little picture of this. Yeah? I will take my, my ruler and so on, and yeah, we'll show you how such switching controller is behaving at at a system first order. Okay. So I have meanwhile prepared a sheet here, and I will simply put it here. And now I'm going to explain what I've drawn or what we see. Well, let's imagine our controller has turned on. Hmm? Turned on whatever we're turning on. Let's say we make a heater and we have a temperature. If we always would turn on, yeah, and it's a PT1 system, yeah, we would simply start to raise the temperature up to a maximum temperature, which is reflecting somehow the maximum possible uh, temperature I can reach with the power of the heater. So the temperature would look like this. We are going up here. This would be the time constant of our room or whatever we are heating up. We would go up here. Would look somehow like this. Three after five time constants we are almost there. This is this is how our system or how, how our, our room or whatever we are heating would heat up. Okay. Here this W, this is our, our reference variable, our reference value, our set point is here. Yeah? And we have this hysteresis, so we are switching at plus or minus the hysteresis delta. Uh, this is what this means. If we are at the maximum temperature, the room will cool. Huh? And it will cool pretty much in the same fashion as it heated up with the same time constants. Huh? So if we are cooling down, it would look like this. And also here, after five time constants, we are again cold. This is how this would look like. So let's say we're starting at room temperature and we're starting to heat because we want to raise it. So actually what would happen is we will follow this line here. The temperature will go up. We are following this line. Then we are reaching the desired value. And here, at a certain point after the desired value, we will turn off. Yeah? Now we turn off. And now we are cooling again. And we see exactly this portion of the cooling curve here. Yeah? So I just try, so it's around one centimeter, so we'll also draw it here one centimeter. So we'll end up here somewhere. Yeah. Exactly this portion I will see here. Here we are, this is parallel. Okay. So our temperature will drop, will drop here following this line actually. And here we're turning on again. Since we're turning on, we will see this part of, of the heating line here again. And how much centimeters I have here? Let's see, it's 1.4. One, one so I will also draw 1.4 here. <laughs> and here, Shift is parallel, so it will look like that. 
a little bit rounded. This is exactly this part here. So our, our temperature will start to raise again. And this, except, exactly this, we will see over and over again. So we will drop again and raise again. So we will drop again and raise again. And our output, our heater, every time we raise, it's turned on. Every time we drop, it's turned off. So that's the typical behavior of a switching controller at a PT1. system. This is how this would look like. Okay. So we have a certain ripple. Yeah? This ripple has a certain frequency also. Yeah? So here, here we have some time, time period, period time. Yeah? Call it TS for switching. Yeah? This is how often the element needs to switch. Okay. What would we need to do to make this a little bit less, to, 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 yeah, to make a little bit less of this amplitude? Huh? Of course, we have to reduce the, reduce the, uh, <laughs> hysteresis. Yeah? finally found the right word. Of course, we have to reduce the hysteresis. If we reduce the hysteresis, it would look like this. Yeah, we will switch faster simply. Yeah? However, the switching period is also much smaller. Yeah? This means if I'm using something like this, yeah, then the contacts, every switch on the contact will produce wear. Yeah? So every, every, every time I switch, this will be less good. Yeah? And if I switch more often, it will decrease faster. Yeah? So then you need to find a balance between what you allow, a deviation, and how often you're switching. Yeah? Modern technology helps us. Yeah? There is something called electronics. I'm sure you heard about this, right? So we are no longer reliable on those, on those switches. Yeah? We can use electronic switches. And with the nowadays power electronics, we can even switch quite a lot of current. Yeah? Those switching elements in electronics are called transistors. Yeah? So if we are using transistors instead of such mechanical contacts, there is no wear. We can switch it as often as we like, and we can switch it almost as fast as we like. Yeah? We can switch it with time periods, milliseconds, yeah? even below. Yeah? It's, so can we, we can really switch it on and off very fast. And if we can do that, yeah, we can really get rid of such ripples. Yeah? Then a switching controller is really looking smooth. In reality, it still switches. It's turning off and on, off and on, yeah? but so fast that we are not noticing that at all. Okay? This is the typical application of nowadays. Yeah? Typ typical application. Yeah? One, one item which is doing that is for for, 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 for instance, the, the frequency converter for your drive. Yeah? So there is a frequency converter. You can adjust the speed of a motor. Yeah? And this frequency converter is really working just by turning off and on the voltage to the motor fast enough that it looks for us so smooth with different speeds and so on. Yeah? Switching. This thing is switching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if we can manage to switch that fast, yeah, I now use a blank sheet again. 
I show you something which we can do with a feedback loop, uh, still using a, a switching controller and let it behave like a continuous controller we like. Yeah. I will show you. Uh, put this away, new sheet, then we go. So switching controller which is behaving like a continuous controller, how is this working? I have prepared here already something. So we are using a switching controller without hysteresis this time even. Yeah? So the output is our, our correcting variable, which is switched to two states. Yeah? Two state controller, two point controller. And here is the controller difference. And here I have not drawn this up to the controller, so we are feeding the controller something else. So we add a summation point here. Yeah? So we'll add the controller difference. Yeah? And whatever comes out here, we'll put to the controller. Yeah? And what are we now summarizing here? Well, we have a feedback loop below with a certain feedback transfer function. I will call this FH. Yeah? Here and we will feed back the output. We will deform the output and then we will reduce the controller difference by the output. So here this is negative. And this whole stuff is my controller. I don't see this feedback loop is totally inside the controller. I don't see it from the outside. Okay? Not at all. So from the outside I have a box which looks like always feed in the controller difference, controller deviation and the output is a switched set point, as a switched correcting variable. What does this mean here? Yeah. So at first, let's say the control difference is high. Yeah. So here, let's say it's not switched on. Yeah. So here is coming back no nothing. Yeah. So it will have the same XD here already. Yeah. So we will turn it on here. Book. Why suddenly something? Yeah. And this suddenly something is going to be transferred to something else. Yeah. So here actually we have we have y multiplied by fh yeah? so this is this is transferred now yeah? and this is reducing already the controller deviation okay if the controller deviation is big enough it does not really matter then we are here somewhere uh, but if we're getting closer and closer or if this is growing yeah then we will already turn off, yeah? even before the control deviation has completely disappeared. Yeah? So if we are getting close to the switching point, yeah, this feedback loop might influence in a way that we turn off or on sooner or later, sooner, yeah? probably. Yeah? And oh, sooner or later, it doesn't really matter. And so we are influencing the switching behavior with this feedback loop. Yeah? And after a while, this control difference, if everything is running smooth, is that low that we stay turned off. Yeah? So it, we might end up in a situation where this is high, then we stay on. If this is then getting lower, we will turn off. Because of this turning off, we will reduce this XD not that much anymore and we're turning on again. So we will now start to switch fast. Yeah? And after a while, this XD is that low that even if I'm reducing it by nothing, we will stay turned off. Yeah? So it, this, this output there is turned on and then turned off and on in a certain way, depending on this feedback loop here and then it will stay turned off. This is, this is the situation. And we are still having a switched controller. 
yeah, because we are switching this on and off. However, we need to take care that our switching elements should be transistors or something like this, which are fast enough simply to be able to switch as fast. Yeah. Let's see how this feedback transfer function here, which is totally internally, is influencing this behavior. Yeah. We will simply say this here. Yeah. We will substitute this. If we turn it on, this behaves like a P element. K unlimited. Okay? Because it's you know, a P element would be the deviation multiplied by a factor, and since the factor is back that steep, yeah, K is going to be unlimited. So these are substitutes because then I can handle it with our controller theory. Yeah? This here I call D from S. Yeah? So what is our D from S? D from S equals X D from S minus Y, this here y from s multiplied by f h from s okay and my y from s this was the wrong color ah. y from s equals d from s multiplied by k okay this is the transfer function of this p element multiplied by k uh, we'll bring this, uh, add this, yeah? so I will now y from s equals d from s, this is xd minus y from s multiplied by fh from s and now big bracket multiplied by k. We have several times we solved those this thing here. Yeah? So we'll do it once again. Y from S equals XD from S multiplied by K minus Y from S multiplied by FH from S multiplied by K. Oh, colorful. Huh? Now bring this to the other side. So we're ending up at y from s plus y from s multiplied by fh from s multiplied by k equals, on the right hand side, there is only left xd from s multiplied by k. Factor out y from s, yeah. so y from s, big bracket, multiplied by big bracket, 1 plus uh, fh, multiplied by k, ah, bracket was not that big, equals xd, multiplied by k. Good. And now we only have this, bring this to the other side. So our output y from s equals our input xd from s multiplied by, and now we have k divided by 1 plus fh from s multiplied by k. Okay. So this would be our transfer function of this, of this controller. Yeah? So this would be our GS. Yeah? And we said K is unlimited. Yeah? So our, our G from S, this here is our G from S. Yeah? So our G from S equals the limits for K going to unlimited of K divided by 1 plus fh multiplied by k. Yeah. 
Unlimited divided by unlimited. Ooh, is not working. A little trick. The numerator and the denominator divided by k both. Yeah. So above I'm ending up at k divided by I will write it k divided by k. And here one fh from s multiplied by k divided by k. So above and below divided by k. I can do this. I will not influence the the ratio k going to unlimited. So above will be left 1, below here is 1 divided by k and here is fh. Yeah. And now if I make this transition to infinity this will get 0. So I'm ending up at 1 divided by fh from s. And this looks like a continuous transfer function. If this is a continuous transfer function, it is a continuous transfer function. I, and it is a sw still a switching controller. Okay. So, and now I am using a switching controller with a cheap control element and can have it look like a continuous controller. So I think you now realize how or why those switching controllers are so widely used. Yeah? Because with nowadays power electronics where we can switch kilowatts, yeah, it's not really an issue anymore. This thing is really kicking in. Yeah? Yeah. Switching controllers. Of course, not all controllers are switching. A lot of controllers are still or will stay continuous controllers. Yeah. Because not all processes and stuff can be simply switched that fast that this is no longer... Imagine a speed controller in your car yeah, only giving full throttle and nothing and just because of the pulsing it is correct. <laughs> no. It's the, the, the the system needs to fit, be fit for the switching. Yeah? So continuous controller will stay a big part of it. And this is why we are discussing them in length in the next few videos. Next video, we're discussing the first and simplest continuous controller, so-called P-controller, proportional controller. How this is behaving and how this looks like will then be covered in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.